Well, amen. Now, I desire you to find your Bibles. Open them up. You can be finding the book right in the middle. You can open them up to the Psalms. That's where we're going to be eventually. We'll get into reading some of that. Uh, not a lot of reading that I have for you today, though. But I have a ton of questions to ask you. And I'm going to start simply by asking you a really simple one. Do you believe in God this morning? And, and you know, that, that seems very straightforward enough, but I mean, it, it's not enough just to ask you that. I mean, do you really believe in God this morning? Do you believe from Genesis 1-1 in the beginning that God created the heavens and the earth? Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that there just over a few days God spoke all this into existence, that he created you in his image, that he made you, he formed you from the dust of the earth, he, he, he breathed the breath of life in your nostrils? Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe on the seventh day that he rested? Do you believe that? Do you believe that uh, uh, the, the, about the fall of man, the sin in the garden? Do you believe uh, Adam and Eve getting kicked out, the descendants there? Do you believe of Noah and the flood? Do you believe that, that, that Noah built an ark, a, a huge ark, and that the, the animals came unto him two by two and uh, uh, more of other kinds? And that's just something you can study it on your own. But they entered into the ark and they closed the door before the world had ever even known of rain. Do you believe that? It's not enough just to believe in God. It's all the way through. Do you believe of, uh, of, uh, uh, about Isaac and Abraham and Jacob? Do you believe of those things? Do you believe of Joseph uh, his trek into Egypt? Do you believe of uh, uh, some people who uh, uh, silently marched around a city and some walls fell? Do you believe of everything in between? Do you believe of all the plans that Solomon had and that he made in the temple? Do you believe those things? All of it, all the way through. And then you get uh, into this particular time of year in, uh, uh, about Christmas. Do you, do, you, do you believe in the virgin birth of Jesus? Do you believe of the, 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 the angels and how they came into the, uh, and they presented themselves to the shepherds? Do you believe of the, 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 the group of wise men that came and presented their gifts? Do you believe all those things? You guys have got quiet on me. It's not picking and choosing. Friend, if you believe in God, you believe cover to cover. You believe in Jesus. You believe in uh, his birth. You believe in, in how, exactly how it came to pass. You believe in the atrocities that Herod had done as he attempted to, to murder every child under the age of two uh, just to try to eliminate Jesus. That Jesus, from the very moment of his birth, began to uh, see opposition in things that was happening and then uh, going in their, their uh, trek down into Egypt to uh, avoid those things and coming back in his ministry and uh, uh, his men, those that he called those that he followed everything in between do you believe in from the pots of water in Cana that was turned into wine from the walking on the sea to being asleep in the center of a ship and a, a, a great storm had arose on the water that they was on and Jesus coming out and saying peace be still do you believe in those things do you believe in Paul as he was on his road to persecute the church and how God spoke to him and he called him out uh, from being uh, uh, Saul the, uh, uh, the destroyer, if you will, unto being uh, known as Paul the apostle unto you the Gentile? Do you believe in those things? The shipwrecks that he went through? What about that... Uh, <laughs> Make uh, that, that, that trial that they had, you know, where they found Jesus guilty. Do you believe in that one too? The punishment that he received? Do you believe that, that, that you know, in, in your Bibles and you read it and it's just words, and it's just black and white words that you read there, uh, that, they, uh, that, that they had found him guilty, that they had uh, uh, placed something over his head, they blindfolded him and they began to hit him and to beat him and say, hey, if you're truly a prophet, tell us which one of us done that. You know, it's words in your Bible, but I want you to understand that you as believing these things, if you're going to sit here this morning and look at me and say with your mouth that you believe in God, then friend, you're going to believe in those things 
things too and the, uh, the, the awful things that, uh, that, that had happened to Jesus during that as he was hit as they plucked out his, uh, uh, his beard as they took a, 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 a crown of thorns and they, 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 they mashed that down into his head and it's not like it just simply poked but it's like these were huge when you talk about thorns of the reeds and the things that was there that was about the that was about the length of your fingers they was about as big around too and they was as sharp as anything you can imagine so was those was uh, plaited and mashed down i mean that ain't like it just like getting out here in a saw bra you understand so when you believe in God, you believe in those things. You believe in the book of Isaiah where it says that uh, uh, he was marred more than any man, that he was uh, not even recognizable as a human being, that there is no possible way that you could even know that this was a man and that, uh, moreover, who this man was. Do you believe in those things too? Because you can't just say, well, I believe in God and then not any of the rest of it. If you're going to sit here this morning and you're going to tell me that you believe in God, then, friend, you have to wholeheartedly believe in all the rest of it. And not only just believe it, but have an understanding of what that is. So they take this, the, 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 the Roman people, and they were so great at, uh, at being vicious and at... at uh, torturing people. They perfected this of all other nations of people throughout all time. They perfected that. So they had this thing called the cat and nine tails, and that's what they would, uh, they would tie you to a post. Your, uh, it was a, uh, simply just a post, one post that was standing uh, in the middle, and it had like a big eye hook on top, and your, 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 your wrist would have been tied together through that eye, and you would have simply stood there, and then they would have took it, and they would have just waylaid you with it. And then every time they pull it back, they would weave pieces of a uh, uh, metal and glass that was in it. And it was kind of like a, uh, it was kind of like a, a really sharp cuckleburrs is what you could almost envision that as. And as they would pull it back, they were designed to tear flesh, not cut. It wasn't designed to cut. It was designed to grab and to pull. So as you sling that thing forward and it mashes into the skin and they yank it back, it wasn't like getting a switching from your granny or from your mama. It wasn't like just having some little welts on your leg. It was physically removing large portions of flesh. You believe that? Because it wasn't just a, a, a few lashes. Understand that. It was ripping the skin away. And this, 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 this ain't even over what you need to believe. Because after that, after all these things, after he had been beat, after he was cut, after his, the majority of the, the, the flesh in this area was gone, now pick up that piece of wood and begin walking that way to the point that he couldn't even do that. Somebody else, he was so physically beaten and abused that he could no longer do that, that somebody else had to carry it the rest of the way for him. Do you believe that? Because it's the Word of God, and it's truth, and it's what it says. And if all those things wasn't enough, it isn't like he had anything left. He couldn't go anywhere, but just to be extra torturous, after they threw him to the ground and placed the nails in his, in his hands and in his feet. Now you think on this. Okay, your feet are on top of one another at an angle with a nail between them. You think of all the, the extent of the, the, the torture that your body has, has got and then you've got nails here. There is no possible way that you can sustain your weight that you are not 100% in misery. You believe that this morning? Because essentially just being stuck on a, on a tree in this manner, it would take a while to die. But the Romans had it figured out where they could kill you in that manner in just a few hours. And then they take, a, they, they take a spear and they pierce your side. Right up through here. 
Guess what that does? Well, that pierces your diaphragm. The position that you are in, that constant pressure that is there, you can't breathe. So then you just hang there while people are making fun of you and you smother. It's not about bleeding to death, you smother. You believe that? And then you believe that, the, uh, well, what, what about the earthquake that happened and the darkening of the sun and how black everything got? Do you believe that too? Because it wasn't no kind of eclipse. It wasn't, it wasn't no uh, uh, kind of odd uh, uh, weather phenomenon that it happened. This was a supernatural event where God had, uh, it was in, the, uh, like a, uh, uh, in a time when it would have been just as light as it is now, but it, it all became dark. And the veil that was in the temple, it was ripped twain and two. They couldn't figure it out. There was an earthquake. The ground began to be upset of the things that had happened to Jesus. And as it began, they took him down. You could tell that he was dead. Just to make sure you was dead, they usually would break your femur. That's the big bone right here. Because if the amount of pressure and force that it would take to break that, if you were just simply rendered unconscious due to pain or dehydration or whatever it is, you would come back to as they broke that. It wasn't for any other reason just to see if you would react is why they would do it. But he was clearly had been through enough that they didn't have to do that. People begged of his body, put him in a borrowed tomb, And the part that most of you would believe is that after that, nobody really cared. A few people mourned for a few days, and we thought it was over. But more importantly, on the third and appointed day, the day in which uh, uh, we should celebrate far more than the coming was the resurrection, and that was the day that they found the, 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 the stone that was rolled away. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that it was gone? Do you believe that they took this, this, this giant rock, this boulder, this stone, and they had took every precaution known to man to make sure that nobody would open that, that nobody would bother it, uh, but somehow or another there was another great earthquake in which God was able to remove the stone so people could see it? Do you believe this morning that when Peter and John, when they ran in there, that it was empty? Do you believe that? And then do you believe that he was seen of the, uh, 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 of the great multitudes of people? Do you believe that it was, uh, it was Jesus that was walking with two believers on the, uh, on the road to Emmaus and they, uh, he was still, so the, uh, the, the scars were still there enough that they couldn't even recognize him? you believe that too? Do you believe the love that he has for you? This morning, do you believe the love that God has for you, that he endured all those things simply because he loved you? There's no other rhyme or reason why it would happen other than the fact that God loves you and he sent his son to die for you because he knew that you and I could never live a life that was going to be good enough. Uh, we couldn't buy our way into heaven. We could do nothing other than accept a gift that his son purchased for you and I at the cost of his life. You believe that too? Now more importantly... Those things are really important. But now do you believe this morning that he has ascended into heaven and he's sitting on the right hand of the Father? Do you believe that he is making an intercession for you and I? Do you believe that the, the, the person between you and the Almighty Father is the man, Christ Jesus, who pleads your case whenever we mess up, whenever uh, uh, we're asking for grace and we're asking for mercy? Do you believe the fact that that very man who endured all that punishment turns to his left and looks at his Father and says, Lord... God, I understand. I've been there. I've walked those shoes. I felt that pain. I know what temptation is. They're not as strong as me. God, they deserve that. They, 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 they need your grace. You believe that? Because that's what happened. You believe that he has went to prepare a place for you? Do you believe the words in red where Jesus said, in my Father's house there are many mansions? If it were not so, I would have told you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you have a home prepared for you? 
I'm asking you this morning, it, it, it seems simple enough. I'm asking, hey, do you believe in God? But I'm asking you more than that. I'm asking you in faith, hey, do you believe all the things that you have not seen? Do you believe the stories in which you have been told? Do you have faith knowing from cover to cover that every piece is true? Do you believe that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God, awaiting him to look across his right shoulder and say, son, it's time. Hey, boys, go turn up them trumpets. Prepare to blow. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that heaven is preparing the wedding feast? Do you believe the table's being fixed? Do you believe the, the, the tablecloths are being spread? Hey, let me ask you, even more importantly, do you believe your name is written on the guest list? That would be the Lamb's Book of Life, because if it ain't there, I don't care where your name's written. If it ain't there, you ain't going. You don't have a seat. You won't have it. It's not happening. I'm asking you this morning, do you believe in God? And if you do, let me read you this verse. Psalms chapter number 46, first half of verse number 10. The Bible says this. You can probably quote it. Be still and know that I am God. Let us pray. Tell me, Father, Lord, as we come before you here this morning. Uh, God, we're just asking, Lord, for, you, for your mercy here this morning. God, we're asking for your grace, Lord. We're asking for your guidance, Lord. We're just asking, God, to feel your presence here this day, Father. We're asking, Lord, to, uh, of all of us who have sat here, Lord, and uh, uh, say with our mouth and our mind and our hearts, Lord, that uh, we do believe in you, Father. Let's, uh, Father, just take us beyond that, Lord. Just uh, uh, put us in your hands, Lord, and move us closer into you, Father. Just wrap us in your arms. Help us, Lord, to uh, not just believe that you are God, but, uh, Father, just to know that you are God and have that faith and that assurance in knowing exactly who you are, what you're capable of, Lord, uh, of, of all the things that you have said, Lord, your, uh, your, your judgments, the, the consequences of our actions. Father, everything that we do, Lord, in life, God, just help us, Lord, to know who you are, to know what is expected of us, Lord, to know what, uh, uh, what our outcome will be, Lord, just to know where we're going to spend eternity. All these things, God, that you have uh, afforded us to be able to know, God, we just ask you, Lord, for your presence here this day, God, to guide us through your word, Lord, that you would be the one to speak here this morning, Father, that you would just bless us to be able to, uh, to sit in your presence, God, and to hear you speak to our hearts here this day. God, I love you. I praise you. I ask these things in your son Christ Jesus' name. Amen. This verse, it says, Be still and know. How many things do you see that on? How many pieces of home interior uh, a picture? I don't even know if home interior is really still a thing anymore, but uh, you see it on, uh, if you went into Kirkland's, if you went into wherever it is you went, if you look at it, some kind of, uh, if Lifeway was still open, whatever kind of Christian bookstore you wanted to be in, or whatever it was, you would find things that would say, be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. Well, I ask you if you believe in God, but now I'm asking you to know. To know that there is a God and to know who he is and to know his expectations and to know what he demands of you and to know what he requires of you. But more importantly, to be still. To be still and to know. Be still and to know. I ask you, do you believe in God? Everybody in here, raise your hand. You, you raised it, you nodded, you acknowledged in some way that you believe in God. Now I'm asking you to know. To know that I am God. And if you're going to know that I am, not I, but the great I am, when Moses said, who shall I say sent me? I am that I am. If you, I'm asking you to know. You guys ever get tired? I'm tired right now. I am sopping wet with sweat. It must be a thousand degrees up here. If you're going to rest, what do you do? What, what are you going to do this evening? You can go home. You're going to eat something. You're going to put our blessed assurance right in our recliners, right? And we're going to kick our feet up at about 
you know, 32 inches, and we're going to lean back and we're going to rest, ain't we? And we're going to be still. Now, if you're going to rest, odds are you ain't moving. Amen? Levi, when Megan rests, is she moving? She rests a lot, don't she? If you're going to rest, friend, you ain't moving. So when the Bible says to be still and to know that I am God, when Jesus says, come unto me, all you that are laboring heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you are going to, to, to study out the book of Hebrews and you are going to rest in Jesus, friend, I need you to know you have to be still. You can't be running to and fro, running around thinking, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Uh, you have to take the verse and say, the man who's running around making all these plans, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense because you don't know where you're going to be. How many of you already got uh, plans for vacation this summer? We ain't even got to Christmas in this year yet. We got one week to go, exactly one week before Christmas. We've already made our summer vacation plans, and you don't even know if you're going to be breathing. Amen? Nod your head. You don't know if you're going to be breathing. You don't know where God is going to lead you. You don't know if you're going to uh, still be here. I, I, I can plan to be at Oakdale in 2023, but, but lo and behold, he may lead me wherever it may be. We've always said Montana. I love God leading me to Montana. Just because we could actually have winter like we were supposed to have this week. That'd be cool. I'd probably get frostbitten when I come home. But to be still and to know that I am God. It's not enough to believe in God. Friend, you have to stop moving your feet and you have to know that he is God. And it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter the, the, the things that are happening. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, if you're confused about your future. It doesn't matter if, you, uh, if you're pondering this or pondering that or whatever you may be perplexed about. And uh, I, I've talked a lot to a, a dear friend of mine who has uh, uh, talked a lot about future and uh, uh, just uh, needing to know and this and that. Well, sometimes we just have to be still and to know that I am God. And uh, another very familiar scripture from the book of Proverbs 3, five and six it says trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding and in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path well if you're waiting on somebody to direct your path friend you're not moving you're being still and you're awaiting direction you're wanting to know which way should I move do I need to move left? Do I need to move right? You, you, if you think of it, if you are standing in a minefield, do you just want to go about it whichever way you want to go, or do you want the person with the mind detector to tell you where to step? You guys ever watch war movies? You ain't ever seen somebody get their leg blown off? Megan? You mean you go check everybody's pulse? I think they all did. You would want somebody to direct your path. Nod your head. You would want that. You're not just going to run through aimlessly, but yet that's exactly what we as God's children do. We're running through a minefield of whatever the devil has laid away for us. If you look at all the verses that, that, that David has wrote, that Solomon wrote his boys, and he talks about all the snares, the traps, the booby traps, if you allow me to say it that way, the mines that the devil has laid. Do you not want the, uh, the, the mine-sweeping team to move out in front of you? Yes, you do. Do you know what you do while they do that? You stand still. And you know what they are doing. And you have faith in their equipment. You have faith in the, and trust in all the things that are going on. But you, Christian, you stand still. And you await God to direct your path. But we ain't patient. Well, preacher, I've been standing here for a whole 42 seconds and he ain't told me to move yet, so I guess I'm just going to go this way. We don't even listen. We don't try to listen. Be still and know that I am God. You know the amount of promises that we have in the Bible that allow us to know who God is? How many of you young parents have ever been told you're paying for you raising? Tristan, you're the only one raise your hand. I mean, you're the only bad kids that's ever been in here. Hallelujah. Man, everybody else needs to be up here teaching and preaching then. Huh? 
be still and know that I'm God? Maybe, maybe you got your life figured out. Maybe you know which way God would, would direct you past, but maybe we're just, uh, we can't be still because we're running to and fro and doing uh, the things that uh, the devil would have us to do. Maybe we're uh, living a life that uh, you only live once, so you know, you're only going to get to sin on this side of the dirt, so you better get all you sin and in while you're here. Well, be still and know that I am God. Because when you read the rest of the verse there in Psalm chapter 46, it's because I will be exalted amongst the heathen. So I need you to know, Christian, that God right over here in Galatians where it says, Be not deceived, God is not going to be mocked. I need you to know, God needs you to know, to be still and know that I am God. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I don't know when our reaping time will be. But the amount of times that we, that I, have been told you're paying for the things you did as a kid, if it's that big of a gap from whenever I was a teenager to jailie, sometimes it may take God a while for us to have to reap. Even the Bible says you may enjoy sin for a season. But you rest assured, be still and know that I am God. He's still there. He's not moved. If you get into the book of Romans and it says, for the wages of sin is death, I need you to understand that. The wages of sin is death. It's costly. The sin that Adam done caused the, the, the fall of man. That caused death to enter into the world because, uh, because of one man's sin. Now all men must die. Because one man died, all men may now be able to live. I need, you to, I need you to grasp that. To be still and to know. For he that soweth to his flesh shall the, of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life. Everlasting. Be still. You rest assured, as sure as I'm standing here breathing this day, God is not a liar. You'll find that in the book of Titus. He ain't a liar. And if God said that this is true, stand still and know it's true. Stand still and know that. You stand still and know that God's eye is everywhere you are. The darkest corner of whatever shack you may be in, to the deepest part of an ocean, to a cave, to a basement, to a bar, wherever it is you want to go, God's eye will see you. And be not deceived. Stand still and know God is not mocked. What about all the other things that we have to go through? What about just mental fatigue? What about stress, pressure, that, the, the daily grind of having to get through life, needing to do this, wanting to do that, uh, all the different things that are going on. You, you are fighting on so many different fronts in your life. You don't know which way to turn. You don't know what's going on. You, you can't hold your head above water. It doesn't matter what you do. It seems it's never good enough. You can't get ahead. There's nothing that really seems to be going your way. Will you too be still and know that I am God? My Bible says that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So even though you feel alone, you ain't alone. He's there. My Bible says that he, is, uh, he, he has went before us. He is our example. He has made the footsteps. You can't tell me God doesn't understand because if it, you, you told me that you believe in him. You told me that you believe that he is our intercessor. You, you told me that you believe he is our advocate. So don't start taking backwater now and say he don't understand. God don't understand where I'm at. He don't understand what I'm dealing with. Well, if you're going to say those words, then you don't believe in God. And friend, my Bible says if you don't believe in God, it says that you ain't going to heaven. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. Second Chronicles 20:17. You shall not need to fight this battle. You don't have to fight every battle in front of you. Jesus turned the other cheek. You don't have to fight. Be still. Know that he is God. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. It doesn't matter what kind of battle you're fighting. You don't have to fight it. He will fight it for you. 
that's kind of part of having a Savior. That's, that's a, a part of, of ha- being saved from a present evil world. Your Bible says that too. It doesn't say from a futuristic tribulation. It says from a present evil world. You are safe from that. Ye shall not need to fight this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. Church, God can't work in your life if you're constantly running around like, like an ant on hot pavement. It's hard for him to work. It's hard for him to move in your life if you're never in the same spot. It's hard for him to answer our prayers when our prayers are never the same. Because we are constantly here, there, we're all over the place. You shall not need to fight this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah, O Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. Just stop. Know who God is. Know who has your tomorrow. Know who your Savior is. If you are willing to sit here and proclaim and to raise your hand and say that God is my Savior, I have given my life to Jesus, I believe in Him, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, then be still. And know that he is going to fight your battles. And he says, and tomorrow, go out against them. For the Lord will be with you. You ain't doing it by yourself. And if you are, you're doing it wrong. Let me be blunt in how I say that. If you're going it by yourself, you're doing it wrong. You don't like to hear that either, do you? What's the truth? I ain't here to make you feel good this morning. I'm here to tell you the truth. If you fight in your battles by yourself, you're doing it wrong. Stand still. Stand still. And you go out tomorrow and you face whatever that is and you know, you, you stand to see the salvation of the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the heathen. It doesn't matter. What, it... Go back. You believe in God this morning? Do you believe in God this morning? Is God the Almighty? Is He the Creator of all things? Did Jesus die on the cross for your sins? Did He take everything that we couldn't and He take it upon Himself all the way to the cross of Calvary? Did He not descend uh, to leave captivity captive? Did He not ascend to spread His blood upon the mercy seat? Is He not? God manifested in the flesh. Do you believe in God this morning? I'll stand here till every person here says it. Do you believe in God this morning? Amen. Is He the Almighty? Is He the Creator of all things? Then why are you fighting by yourself? Why are you going it alone? Why are you living like you don't exist? Why do you not take your troubles and your burdens to Him? You'll bring it to everybody else, but you won't take it to the creator of the universe? And you're going to sit here and tell me that you believe in God? At some point, Christian, our mouth and our actions have to match. Our mouth can't be the only thing that believes in God. Our actions have to believe in Him too. Our lives have to believe in God. The way we fight our battles have to believe in God. And it doesn't matter what kind of battle it is. It can be a social battle. It can be addiction. It can be debt. It can be poverty. It can be sickness. It can be, it can be whatever it is. I don't care what you're fighting, but ye shall not need to fight this battle. Set yourself. Stand ye you still. Rest in God. Believe in who he is. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Do you believe in God? then who else do you want with you? What else do you need? What else do you need to be on your side? Preacher, you don't understand. I probably don't. But God does. He does. Preacher, you ain't never been there. Probably ain't. But he has. You don't know what it's like. Hmm? 
He does. Stand still. And know that I am God. Let's stand together this morning.